Hello everybody and welcome back to another video and today I'll be showing you how to make punch wall simulator which is a game that has been growing really fast on Roblox so I thought why not make a tutorial on how to make it. So the first thing we want to do is make it so you can punch the walls and break through it and collect wins at the end. So how we are going to do that is we are going to add a part. Now let's make the size of this part 20 comma 20 comma 4 and that'll create a basic wall for us and let's just position that like this now in punch wall simulator it uses minecraft textures i believe so i am just going to be using roblox textures for this but you can definitely use minecraft textures if you want and I think I'm actually going to change the size of this a little less, like that. And then maybe scale it up a little. That looks pretty good to me. And now we need to create the punching animation. So let's go and animate this character. So for the punching animation, I'm probably just going to keep it simple. But I'll, I'll skip to once I am finished with the animation. Alright, so this is my punching animation. It's not very good, but it'll do. So let's... So before we publish it, let's go to set animation priority and change that to action. And then we can publish to Roblox. And let's name this punch... Anim... And then put creator if you're creating in a group then set it to your group if you're not then just set it to you and then you can submit it and open up the link and copy the code so now we need to make it so that whenever the player clicks it plays that animation so let's go into the starter player and go into starter player scripts and put in a local script And then we'll do local player equals game dot players dot local player local mouse equals player colon get mouse and then do mouse dot button one down colon connect function and what this does is this gets the player this gets the mouse from the player, and this detects when the mouse is clicked. So now what we need to do is make it so that it plays the animation. So let's do local uh, punch animation equals instance dot new animation. What this does is creates an animation, and then punch animation dot animation id equals and this will be the id so we're going to do rbx asset id and right here we are going to put our id of our animation that we copied earlier before and if you didn't copy it you can just go onto the uh but onto the tab that it opened up when you clicked that link and copy this code. Now what we want to do is do player.character.humanoid colon load animation and then in here we are going to do punch animation. I spelled punch animation wrong. Let me just change that. So whenever we click, it should play the animation, which it is not doing. Let me see if I can fix this real quick. So what we are going to want to do is add animator right here, and then I forgot to play the animation. So we need to change this to local uh, punch animation track equals to this. And then we can do punch animation track one play. 
and make sure you only have a capital P. So now if we test this, as you can see, whenever we click it plays the animation. Not a very good animation, but I mean, it works. So now we need to make it so that they can increase their strength. So to do that, we are going to add a GUI. Let's do a screen GUI and let's add a frame. Let's add a UI corner to this frame. And then scale it down so that it's like this. And then let's find an image of a muscle. Or let's do strength. Here we go. So let's add a image label. Move this over here and then let's change the image to this image. So copy asset ID and just put it there. Let's change the background transparency to one. Or actually let's keep it like that. Add a UI corner. Change the size of the UI corner or the corner radius to 0, 100. And let's see if we can scale the image down. All right, it doesn't look like we can change the image size. So let's just uh, change the corner radius to a like 20 maybe. Put or make this guy a little smaller. Put that there. And let's make this a little bigger. Then that that looks pretty good. All right. So now what we want to do is add a UI stroke and let's see. Let's change the stroke color to yellow or an orange and change the thickness to five. Let's adjust this image a little. And that looks pretty good. Now let's add a text label into this frame. Shrink it down a little. Put it right there. And then let's change the background transparency to 1, scaled to true, font to Fridoka 1. We can find it, there it is. And then let's just change the text of this to, let's just make it question marks. So now that's our strength. So let's make a punching bag. You can obviously put more effort into this punching bag. I'm just making it like this for the sake of the video. And I'll be back once I'm finished. This is my punching bag. And it's not very good, but it'll do. Just rename your punching bag to punching bag. And then you can change the colors to whichever, whatever you want. I'm just going to keep it as that. So now let's make it whenever you click the punching bag, plays the animation, and then it, it gives you strength. So first we need to create a data store and value saver. So to do this, we are going to use a plugin called uh, data store. I'll put the link to this plugin in the description and you just have to click this plus button create a folder name it leader stats and then we can close out of this and then we can go into server script ser service and then we have the data store and inside of player and into leader stats so in leader stats we can add in a number value and let's change this to strength. And now we have an automatic saving strength value. So 
To make sure that saves, we are going to have to save the game to Roblox. I am just going to make it punch wall simulator tutorial. And let's save that. Once it reopens, we can go into the home screen, game settings, and then go into permissions, or actually security, and allow this one, API services. This will allow you to use data store. So now we can save that. For some reason it says cannot save settings. Oh, there we go. All right, so now that we've done that, we are going to add a debounce to this so they can't click instantly. So local debounce equals, we'll just do, they can click every 0.5 seconds. And then, or no, debounce equals false. And then if debounce is equal to false then, and then we, let's add an end down here. And then we'll do local delay equals 0.5. So if it is equal to false, then we want to set debounce to true. And then wait 0.5 after we do what we need to do. And then set debounce to false. So now that we have done that, we can make it so that if they are clicking the punching bag, then it'll give you strength. So let's rename these all to punching bag. And then we are going to de detect if the player is clicking the punching bag so if mouse dot target is equal equal or dot name is equal equal to punching bag then so if the target of the mouse wherever the mouse is if that name is equal to punching bag then we want to increase the players um, strength so player dot strength dot value plus equals one. So that will increase our strength by one. And now we need to make it so that this shows your strength. But first I am going to add that stroke to that little part. So we're just going to go into the frame, take this stroke and paste it into here and then we are going to add in a script to this or a local script and we are going to do local player equals game dot players dot local player and we are going to do a while wait do function so it will always change this text to the new strength amount. So to do this, we are going to do script dot parent dot text label dot text equals player dot leader stats dot strength dot value. So now if we test this, this changes to zero. And if we click this, strength is not a valid member of players out of two for two. That is my bad, I forgot to put leader stats right there. So player dot leader stats dot strength dot value plus equals one. And then let's make sure to anchor this too. Now if we test it, all right, so now if we click this, our strength value will go up by one and it shows up both there and there. 
But we need to make a maximum distance that they can click. Because we don't want people to be able to punch the bag from all the way over here. So now we need to add the maximum distance. And to do that, we are going to want to figure out the distance between the punching bag and the player. So, local distance equals root part dot position minus uh mouse dot target dot position and we're gonna put this in parentheses and we're gonna do dot magnitude so what this does is takes the position of the character and subtracts it from the mouse dot target dot position so the position of the punching bag and then it magnitudes it which makes it so that it's just a singular number instead of three numbers or a vector number and now we need to detect if the distance is greater than let's just do 20 for now so if distance is greater than 20 then or great, let's do greater than or equal to 20 then it will run this function so the problem is that I spelled magnitude wrong so we need to spell that correctly M A G I or N I T U D E so now if we test this if we click from here it does not increase at all but if we click from um, Oh, I put greater than or equal to. We need to do less than or equal to. So now if we test this. So if we click over here, it'll increase. But from here, it won't. We need to lower the distance down a little more. Let's go ahead and try 5. So if we click from here, it does not work. But if we click from here, 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 right here. So if we click from right here, it works. I'm gonna increase it to 10 so then you're able to click from like over here. And yeah, I think that's gonna be it for today's video. I will come out with a part two very soon. Hope you enjoyed. Make sure to like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.